All right, good morning, everybody. We're a little bit uh, behind schedule, but I'm probably going to be on the short side, so we'll get you out to lunch before it's ravaged by everyone else. Uh, so thank you for coming in. It's my talk called Code of Art. Uh, I decided last year that I really wanted to speak at RubyConf, so I wrote three proposals about different topics to speak about. Uh, one topic I knew really well. One topic I knew pretty well. One topic I didn't know anything about. Um, and so then, you know, kind of crossed my fingers and waited. And then I got one, two, three rejection letters in a row. I said, oh, man, this is really tough. So then I emailed Chad, and I said, Chad, why do you hate me so much? How'd you reject, how'd you reject three proposals that I thought were all pretty good? And then they, uh, somebody else canceled, and they decided, hey, you can do this one. And of course, it was the one I knew the least about. Um, the reason I wrote this was that I wanted an excuse to learn about it. I didn't know anything about the subject. Uh, and I figured this was a good, high-pressure way to do it. So hopefully today you can learn a little something. Now, to make uh, one of my other presentations is about giving good presentations. And I will now proceed to break several of the rules that I lay out, uh, one of which is relying on conference Wi-Fi to do things. So if you can, while uh, we all raise Chad's room bill to astronomical levels, um, I would invite you to open a laptop if you have it, and please gem install Ruby processing. Uh, it's about a 12 meg download, so that'll take, like probably by Sunday it'll be done. Um, and I just hope if we could get a couple people with it downloaded, that would make me feel good. Uh, in the meantime, we're gonna do some discussion. So if it's running in the background at a whopping 15K per second, it was really kind of Matt's to make fun of us in our third world internet this morning. Um, We'll, we'll hopefully somebody can get it done. Also, everything that you see today from code, slides, PDFs of this document um, are all on my GitHub page here with the uh, code of art. You'll see it there. It's the only public repository on my GitHub. So another uh, rule that I've broken here is to make the AV people very mad. So we have the kind guys from Code Freaks here doing their awesome work recording. I say, yeah, so I want to use two screens and um, I'm also going to switch computers in the middle, and at least I don't have audio, but it's kind of a complicated setup. My friend uh, Mark is going to help us when we get to the live coding part. I'm hoping that some of you can follow along and do uh, some, some code. So to get into it, we're going to be talking about Ruby processing. Um, our goals for today are to define Ruby processing so you know what it is that we're talking about. Oh, I should actually plug my power right here. <laughs> To understand how it works, what the framework is, what it does, uh, with set up and draw, and to write a first sketch. So in processing, programs are called sketches. So what is processing? What can it do? What's Ruby processing? And then a quick tutorial about writing your first thing. That's what we're going to try and do in our 40 minutes. So processing is a uh, specialized language built kind of on top of Java. It runs through the JVM. Uh, it is Java-like in its syntax, but it's kind of simplified. There are a lot of helpers and libraries um, to aid you in producing visual programs, visual sketches, so uh, through several means. It was invented at the MIT Media Lab, um, and they really tried to make it easy for non-programmers. They wanted to get more artists involved in programming. Specializes uh, very easily in 2D, so this is a little demo program uh, called Pointillism that's pulling uh, a, a JPEG image, finding the color code at random pixels, and then creating circles of that color code. So I'm showing you on the left side, here is the code that runs this. Um, we're going to talk about how the structure works here. First. We require Ruby processing, uh, create a class, all right. The two keys to a processing sketch are the setup and the draw. Setup is a one-time, automatically run initializer. Set your uh, instance variables, your constants, things like that. And then draw is just run over and over. Uh, by default, it'll go as fast as it can. So here in the movie, um, it was drawing one point, each run through the draw method was drawing one point of the flower picture. So just going through this 
over and over. That's all a processing sketch is, set up and draw. Everything else from there, you're writing your own methods, you're invoking classes, you can utilize libraries. There's nothing magical beyond that. Set up and draw, that's it. Uh, so 2D drawing, we can see a few things in here. Most of this should look very Ruby-ish. Um, there's like a load pixels method here which is pulling the pixels from the image. Um, this is part of the Ruby processing library. Fill is setting a fill color, and ellipse is what's actually drawing the circle. So ellipse uh, takes four parameters, the x-coordinate, the y-coordinate, the height and the width, or width and height, yeah. Uh, so like most graphics libraries, uh, x and y zero is up in the top right corner, and so you, know, you just say x 200, 200, so it comes over 200, down 200, and then draws a uh, pointillized size circle. So up in the top, I set my pointillized size to uh, 10, 10 pixels. Okay, so simple example, not all that impressive. Uh, we can look at a 3D example. Uh, this is using OpenGL. If you have an old, sad MacBook like mine that doesn't even do hardware OpenGL acceleration, yours will be all choppy like this. Um, these balls are following the mouse pointer, as you can see, and moving around in there, gravitating towards it. Uh, and so this is a, a pretty minimal example. But you can see there isn't a ton of hardcore graphics code in here. Uh, basically, all Flight Patterns does, that's the name of this demo, Flight Patterns. It loads a couple libraries, these voids. OpenGL handles, obviously, the OpenGL um, backend stuff. And so this is taking advantage of processing's Java roots. Because processing's written in Java, Ruby processing runs all your code through JRuby. When you install, uh, when you do gem install Ruby processing, you get a packaged up JRuby interpreter so that your code is running through JRuby, through the JVM. Because of that, you get the advantages of hooking up to the JVM especially being able to use Java libraries very easily. Um, so here, it's using Java OpenGL libraries and a Java library called Boyd's. Um, does some setup and sets up OpenGL. Uh, defines a mouse pressed. So when you click um, on here, it changes from like 3D specular balls to, to flat balls bouncing around. And the draw method, most of this is the complexity of making the balls track the mouse. Uh, you can get into kind of complex math pretty quickly as soon as, you, especially if you get into 3D. But still, for the rendering 3D mouse tracking stuff, you're still ending up with 59 lines of code, you know, including everything. So it's made it relatively easy. You can also do video. Uh, so yes, I recorded this in my hotel room. I called it witness protection. Um, just basically blowing up the pixels of a video and redrawing them as squares of 10 pixel wide. So you can kind of tell it's me. Uh, it's really pretty, when you sit down with a video camera and like, oh, I need to record a video of myself, you're not quite sure what to do. So that's just, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Uh, this is, the, the way I wrote it is extremely slow, so it comes out to like, it, you, it's not even FP, I guess it'd be half FPS, it's a frame every two seconds, three seconds. Again, if you have a nicer computer, it'll probably go faster than mine. Uh, but just to look at how this demo's put together, requiring loop Ruby processing, loading a video library, importing the processing video library, a little setup information, um, and then a draw, and draw point, draw point is just my method to create the squares. But again, in 50 lines, most of which are simple, uh, I'm opening up the camera, collecting video, interacting with that video, and outputting frames. So it is kind of amazing to me that it just works that simply, that I get the little light fires up next to my eyesight, and it's on and working.
So if you want to do things with video, uh, it's probably too slow to do in real time for most applications, but you can uh, work with recorded video and you can output frames uh, very easily. You can output JPEGs, PNGs, TIFFs, and then you can combine those in um, like QuickTime Pro and create a, a movie file from there. All right, and then interaction. Uh, who doesn't love Pong? So this is the game of Pong. Uh, it's a little bit longer in terms of this code length because you're dealing with uh, when the ball intersects with the paddles and what angle and bouncing off the edges and all these things. Uh, but still relatively simple. You can do interaction with keys with, I'm not a very good Pong player against myself, so I started missing. Uh, the mouse, it just makes it very, very easy. And it's especially easy when you start with an existing example. Um, so I found myself really having, uh, you know, unfortunately I missed this morning, Adam Keyes gave a uh, having talk about having fun programming. And when I started working with these examples, it really kind of unlocked some fun that I felt like I hadn't had in a while. Like I was just goofing around. How do I make my paddles bigger? How do I make them smaller? You know, speed up the ball. You can make the ball impossibly fast. So Jeremy Ashkenas, who's uh, not here this weekend, uh, wrote Ruby Processing, wrote the library that wraps processing for your use from Ruby, made it really easy. Um, he has a beautiful site with awesome projects on it, um, has ported a lot of examples from Ruby pro uh, from Java's processing, and he's cool. So he really deserves any credit. He did all the hard work. So what I would like to do now, did anybody get the gem successfully installed? Zero. Bam. OK, well, fantasy land, you all got it installed. Woohoo! Let's build it. All right, so I'm done with that. So this is in the category of things not to do, like make your presentation complex enough to change that, make that over there. All right. So I know as soon as you get out, probably at lunch, because you'll be like salivating, you're so excited to try out processing, uh, you can hopefully read this little tutorial I put together. We'll walk through it relatively fast, especially since nobody's doing it except for Mark. Uh, so on the front, uh, discuss a few of the key things to know about processing, what we've already said. Uh, I show you a summary of the most important commands uh, to know. There's not much to it, especially when you're working in 2D, as we're going to be doing in this demo. Uh, basically, all you need to know are a few shapes ellipse, uh, quads, rectangles, triangles, and you can do some pretty cool stuff. All right, so if you look on the inside, uh, it shows you with execution, we're already queued up here for RP5. RP5, uh, when you install the gem, it installs this RP5 executable that runs your code through JRuby and all that for you. So RP5 has a few different run modes, uh, the first of which is just run, which executes code as you'd normally expect. Watch will observe your code file, and anytime you save changes to that file, automatically reload the window. So when you're experimenting, this is what I always use, is watch. Um, you can just make a few changes, you know, Apple S, and then see your, your sketch update. There's also live, which I have not messed with very much, but uh, it loads your sketch and an IRB terminal, where you can kind of interactively reprogram your sketch. Uh, that's too advanced for me. So we're going to start up with a little bit of code. So this is what I called I0. Um, it's pretty simple. We just set up, we set up background color 0, so our background comes out black. Uh, smooth is turning on anti-aliasing. And then I set ellipse mode and rec mode to center. Uh, they can either be center 
or something else I don't even use. I always use center, whatever. That's just basically, am I going to specify the center of the circle or do I want to specify the top left corner? I find it more logical to, to specify the center. And then in my draw, I set the fill, so a color of 120, 120, 255, it's RGB values, right, 0 to 255. Uh, a stroke of white, a stroke width of 10, and draw an ellipse at X 400, so over 400, down 300, and height and width of 100. Ta-da, my circle, now I'm an artist. I told you that setup is run once and draw is run many times, but you don't really see anything happening, right? It is still running draw over and over. If we were to observe my activity monitor, we'd see it, you know, 15% or something like that. There's code running. It's just drawing this exact same thing over and over, so we can't see any change. So what we'll do from there, uh, as we start working on I1, is to add in some animation. Simplest way to do this is start introducing some instance level variables. Uh, what I wanted to do was create kind of a scrolling effect where I draw some circles and I go down to the next line, draw more circles, go down to the next line, draw more circles. So go in here, uh, add a little bit of code to create the X, the Y start, the delta is gonna be how big the steps are both as they move to the right and move down. Uh, I introduce a method, so I just call it blue circle. And at this point, this is where I think Ruby processing gets better than regular processing. Um, you know, as kind of an aside, people in, in my business frequently ask me, like, why use Rails or Ruby when you can use Python or Django or PHP and Cake PHP and all those things. And I, I'm generally against imitation. And so if you could use the original, why use an imitator? Uh, in this case, I think the imitation, the Ruby processing is better in many ways than original processing because I don't really like using Java. So as soon as you get beyond using two methods, if you're in normal processing, you need to start writing Java. And that's no fun when we can write Ruby instead. So at this point, I've now transcended past what Ruby processing is giving me and just starting to write normal Ruby. Uh, I could import libraries. I could interact with a Rails app, a Sinatra app, whatever, it's, it's just Ruby. So I created a method, a uh, blue circle, that is now parameterized with an X and Y coordinate. Pretty much the same code for actually drawing it. And so now you can see uh, it steps along creating rows. All right, simple enough. And then I2, uh, we're gonna start getting a little bit of interaction. So everything so far is just run it and things happen. Now I want to do a little bit of interaction with the mouse. So there are a few uh, predefined methods that when you, that, that fire events, respond to events of mouse clicking and key clicking and so forth. So if you scroll uh, down, yeah, we have mouse clicked is when it's pushed down and released. There's also mouse pressed when it's down, when it first goes down. There's mouse released when it comes up or uh, mouse scrolled. Yeah, we'll get to that one next. So now all I'm doing is setting uh, kind of logo style, like pen up, pen down is what I was thinking about when I created this, was to make a draw on uh, instance variable that's when it's on, draw the circle, and then draw one, turn it off, and just turn that flag when the mouse is clicked. So if we save it and run that, get a blank canvas until the mouse comes over and starts clicking things, and just get one circle for each mouse click. Pretty simple. All right, on the back page. It's not very interesting, right? So we, we said we're doing art and we just made a few circles that all look the same. Uh, and, that, and that's, even in modern times, it's not qualifying. Uh, it's very artsy. So I want to add in a little bit of variation, some colors, some transparency, and so forth. Um, it makes it very easy to deal with transparency. You just add on a fourth parameter. If anything, that's a color. It's RGB and then transparency, 0 to 255. So first, uh, I defined color set uh, is a set of a few colors. If Is anybody else colorblind? Just you and me. Well, if you're not a good with colors, uh, 
There's a little book called The Color Index, which is amazing. It's about this big. And you can flip through it, and it has awesome color combinations. And so whenever I need to do something like this, I just pull a random page and then pick six colors that all work together. And it gives you the RGB values or the CMYK values, and they're awesome. Uh, so I pulled those out. All right, and then I created, uh, if we go down a little bit, Mark, there's a random color method um, that's just going to select one element out of that array. Mouse press, still having the same function, just turning my drawing on. And then uh, draw, yeah, if you go in the draw, I added in up here a little randomness to the size. Uh, so it's just going to add a third parameter to my circle. So the specifying the D for diameter, diameter is going to be random between 100 and 200 pixels. And that's it. And so now when we click, we'll get some different colors, some different sizes. Okay. It's getting a little bit better. And so then finally, I've now lost my animation. It's all mouse actuated. Uh, I wanted to add in a little bit of what we had taken out from I2. So if we go to I4, thank you. I set just built a little, go all the way up, uh, and then just set a D, D equals D start. Uh, so I wanted to, the longer the person kept the mouse down, I wanted the <coughs> diameter to increase. So just have diameter as an instance level variable. Draw is pretty much the same now. Uh, random color, same. Random transparency up there a little bit, setting a, a randomized transparency. I also added in a little section about key interaction. <coughs> Scroll up like three lines. The mouse is not working. <laughs> OK. So uh, this is what a key press event looks like. You can just say case of key. It gives you a string of the key that was pressed. Uh, and so you can react to that. I said C for clear to background zero. S, that's all you have to do to output files, is just say save frame and then give it a name. Uh, it auto fills in the numbers with the number of the frame it's on. You can specify different formats. And I guess it reads what file name you've given. So if you say .png, it'll output PNGs. Or if you say .tiff, it'll output TIFFs, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then just Q to, to exit. Mouse press is the same. Go down a little bit. Uh, mouse release. So once the user lets go of the mouse, I want the uh, drawing to kind of return to its start state. So to set the diameter back to D. And then whenever you're dragging the mouse, it's constantly increasing the diameter. So we run that. And then just drag around. Mouse failure. Where's the mouse? So this, I, I know many of you are probably looking at this like, oh my god, this is all we sat through for this talk, like a bunch of colored circles. Um, but if I swear if you try it out, you will start to say to yourself like, oh, this is pretty fun. And that was really what I enjoyed about it. There are amazing examples available. Um, so in the zip that I sent you are just the few that I demoed here. Uh, if I can pull them, I probably should have shown this ahead of time. If I go bah, project, there's in the gem file itself, he packages a bunch of examples. Uh, and if you go, it's like RP5 unpack samples or something like that, you'll get out about 15 different samples that try, uh, like Fern shows you some neat recursion. Flight patterns is that uh, 3D one we looked at. Jay Wishy is kind of a famous little rotating thing. Uh, there's also a great book, if you get interested in this. Um, this book is written for non-programmers. So for all of you who are probably better programmers than I am, uh, you could fly through this book in like a day or two. Uh, just flip pages, you know. I don't need to know what an array is, just skip through. And everything, 
it's written obviously for original processing, so in Java syntax. But if you just take things that are camel cased in Java and just make them, you know, under whatever we call it, underscore with lowercase letters, it'll work. Like Java, um, I'm sorry, Ruby processing implements everything in like kind of a way you would expect. The na method names are very similar. They're just those small changes. In this book, uh, Jeremy, on his GitHub page, posted all the examples from this book converted to Ruby processing. So as you're following along, you can do everything in Ruby. Um, and it's, just, it's really pretty cool. And that's it. I hope you can uh, give it a try. I knew we were going to be fast, and I didn't know we were going to be quite that fast. Um, so if anybody has a question, I'd be happy to try and answer it and apologize if I can't. Yeah. Could you tell people a little bit about the relationship between processing and the library? Nope. Uh, can I talk about the relationship between processing and wiring? I have no idea at all. Should I? Okay. So, I can repeat um, it. <laughs> <laughs> so wiring is an environment for, oh yeah. So wiring is an environment for doing uh, like physical computing stuff. So there's a, a wiring board that's a like sort of like a super huge Arduino if you've ever seen such a thing. And wiring is the uh, the processing environment or the the environment that you use to program it. Um, processing was I actually can't remember which one came first, but they they are very similar environments. They come with a similar set of libraries. They're obviously meant for doing very different things, but. Um, processing wiring and um, the Arduino development environment all kind of share the same, like the, the distribu distributed ones all kind of share the same thing. And processing and wiring are both kind of set up to be able to talk to each other as well. So you can do physical stuff with the wiring board and the wiring environment, and then it very easily allows you to talk to processing to do visual stuff on your computer. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, that does remind me, I wanted to mention that some of these Ruby-based processing projects are not stagnant, but it doesn't seem like many people are using it. Uh, if you search for examples, there aren't a lot of like blog posts or uh, libraries. If you look at the GitHub page, a lot of it is from 2008. Everything I used worked, and 90% of it was all from this one guy. Uh, so I would really encourage you, if you find it interesting, to try writing a little tutorial about it. Try um, pump it up a little bit because it's really pretty neat. Next question? Yeah. Can you handle gestures? I think it would be pretty difficult. Um, I would guess you would have to look, like maybe if there were a Java library that could, that could do that. Right. So if it weren't complicated enough for you to like run Ruby talking to JRuby and then in parallel to run Mac Ruby talking to Coco and pool all this data together, then yes, you could do it. Uh, as you're like that's four interpreters running at once, which would be it's kind of impressive. Yeah, and and after all that, you can make some awesome circles. Yeah. What did you say the name of that color book? The color index. If I had Wi-Fi, I would pull it up for you. Um, there's a whole set of little books, color index, type index, color index two, photo idea index. Um, it's like one guy, he writes them all, and they're awesome. They're also um, bound with like a plastic cover. So after you pull them out and read them 100 times, it still looks great and doesn't get beat up. Yeah. Color schemer, I haven't seen that one before. Software? Color Schemer Studio. Sorry. Sorry. See, I told you I already pissed off the audio guys like once or twice. Uh, this is just learning processing. Simple enough. Right. Yeah. I'm thinking about using processing.js so that I can use this kind of thing in a web app. Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about that? Can you talk about 
I haven't experimented with it, um, but I was thinking a little bit what it, what it would look like, and I think relatively easily you could uh, stitch this together with web apps to generate images in the background, uh, which would be, could be pretty cool. Like I, I was wanting to experiment uh, with creating graphs and things like that, um, data visualization. There's awesome work. Uh, so I know I saw at least one person from Sunlight Labs around this morning. Um, so Jeremy did a project, has done two projects for a Sunlight Labs Apps for America project to um, mix data and processing. So he wrote uh, one that maps earthquakes using like a 3D globe and pulling GIS data about where earthquakes are occurring. I think this year, and maps it all in 3D, which is pretty amazing. Um, there's another one he did called Know Thy Congressman that uses processing. Um, I, I think there's good potential there for interfacing with web apps. I haven't seen much of it done. And that could be that I just haven't seen it, but um, to me, it's, uh, there's like fertile ground there for a little maybe like Ruby, Rails, and processing integration to do some neat backend stuff. Daniel's processing JS is is another library, so you can use it directly in JavaScript if you right. want to, to access all the processing capabilities. Except that it, last I heard, it only did the two dimensional part. Of the huh. Okay. So there's processing JS that can do JavaScript-based processing interaction. You can also um, the way they have the JRuby interpreter packaged up, you can load them as like applets if you want your web server and your user to transmit. 12 megabytes each time they load your page. Um, <laughs> it will work eventually, but yeah, you have to like wait and come back. Yeah. Uh, wrong method. Um, I was trying to understand how it works. Since you said it keeps on repeating, mm -hmm. is it trying to achieve some frames per second, or does, does it talk on? You can specify. Uh, so the question was, draw. Does draw have? Does, is it trying to achieve something? Uh, and so you can specify a max frames per second, and it will try and go up to that. So typically, a lot of examples will say uh, frame rate 30. You know, it's just a typical uh, frame rate. But otherwise, it goes as fast as it can. As fast as it gets through, it'll just call it once again. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Any other questions? All right, enjoy your lunch. Thanks.